driving in the rain, heading to Chicago for Emily's slash Lily's commencement ceremony. Dr. Lily, I don't know, Rofio? I don't know how to say it. Rofio? Rof? Rof? Rofi? Dosages. There's Brynn. She's ready to go. Brynn, smile for the camera, say hi. She's reading a book. She doesn't want to talk. Cameron? Hi. Oh, see, Cameron's nice. She's talking. Brynn has promised to uh, at least one time yell at me and stomp off while I'm while I'm videoing today. It's kind of part of the routine, so can't tell you when it's gonna happen, but it'll happen, right? Oh yeah. Kind of downtown Chicago right now, but stuck in a lot of traffic. We're still gonna make it in time though, so that's a good thing. Natalie's doing a good job of driving. Don't even think you're getting into a car like that. You're gonna turn. What I would recommend doing is when you get to the stoplight, there's a stop sign here, and then the next stoplight, take a right. I'm assuming she'll be a Dr. Lily. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> Natalie. You decided to marry her, Dan. <laughs> yeah. I know. Have you noticed how much my hair is falling out? Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to go to section 103, that's where we're going to go. Thank you to all my friends and family for all your love and support. Come together. We put on these robes. We put on these less than flattering hats. We wear the school colors. And we celebrate you, our graduates. We are incredibly inspired, impressed, and proud of you. And given this occasion, it makes sense that the first person to address you is a fellow student, Ashley, now a graduate. We'd now like to invite Jordan David Cisneros from Rush Medical College, who's been appointed the student commencement speaker for the class of 2023. He is also the recipient of the 2023 Excellence in Public Health Award from the U.S. Public Health Service Department. And as well, earlier this week, was inducted into AOA, which is the Honors National Medical Society. Please welcome to the microphone your student commencement speaker, Dr. Jordan Cisneros. <laughs> Dear distinguished faculty, honored guests, proud families, and most importantly, the class of 2023. It is with great honor and humility to stand before you as we celebrate this momentous occasion. Today represents many years of dedication, hard work, and sacrifice. For many of us, it also serves as our transition as lifelong students into the healthcare workforce so we can finally start chipping away at this mountain of student loan debt. As a matter of fact, to make some quick cash last week, I went to donate some blood plasma and the nurse told me my veins were too small. Apparently, even my veins are poor. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I look forward to my job as a resident doctor, 
and we look forward to the contributions that many of you will make in the years to come. As we get ready to embark on this next phase of our journey, I invite you to take a moment and reflect on all you have accomplished in such unprecedented times. You would be hard pressed to find another generation of health professionals who trained under situations which included Zoom mishaps, toilet paper shortages, and quarantine haircuts. Moreover, the boundaries of our lives became blurred and our circle of physical contact shrunk to a minimum. People lost their jobs, people lost their lives, and life as we knew it seemed as if it would never be the same. My life also drastically changed during this period, in a moment in, in life that nothing in life can truly prepare you for. I was midway through my second year, and the day started off like any other, except 2,000 miles away, my father was hospitalized and in the battle of his life against COVID-19. On January 6, 2021, I received a call from his doctor that my father had went into cardiac arrest. And despite multiple rounds of CPR and life-saving measures, he passed away due to complications from COVID-19. My father, my hero, was gone. Immediately following his death, an immense sense of guilt swept over me because for three weeks, my father, who loved his family so dearly, suffered alone in that hospital bed without any loved ones by his side. You see, my father was always there for me. He was there when I took my first step. He was there my first day of kindergarten. He was there to move me into college. And he was there when I received my white coat. And when he needed me most, I felt like I let my father die alone. And though I mourned his death, I did what so many of you are used to doing in this demanding field. I cast my emotions aside and I kept working. Fast forward two years later to my fourth year. I was rotating on the pediatric infectious disease service and we had just been consulted to provide recommendations for a previously healthy two-year-old boy who had contracted a life-threatening infection. The reality of the situation was bleak. There was no cure for his condition and all we can offer was medical support and hopes that he would get better on his own. He never did. I remember the day prior to his passing, as I stood over his little body, as artificial pumps in the room worked as his heart, and a ventilator took artificial breaths for him. He was so swollen, you could barely see the remnant of what was once a healthy child. I looked over to the corner of the room, and I saw his mother, what I could only describe as utter despair. Being a father myself, and having lost one in recent times, I felt compelled to say something, anything. As I walked over to her, legs trembling, heart pounding, I kneeled down to eye level. I put my arm around her, and I said, I'm here for you. I'm here with you. She buried her head into my chest and started to weep. It was a full circle moment for me. And in that moment, I realized something truly profound. This whole time I thought my father had died alone, but it couldn't be further from the truth because he had his medical team by his side when he needed them most. And in the very near future, if not already, you will be that individual to help a patient and their family get through what may be the deepest, darkest, and most vulnerable moment in their life. That is why you must always embrace the power of human connection. Regardless of your role, every interaction you have with the patient and their loved ones matter. From this day forward, you are now in a privileged position. And now your words and your actions carry weight behind them. And may they be for the better men of our patients and their families. Remember this important virtue. It costs nothing to be kind, yet it's the richest gift you can give. It costs nothing to be kind, yet it's the richest gift you can give. But as you all know, medicine is challenging. And a time will come in which you feel like you have nothing left to give. Studies show that an overwhelming 55% of frontline healthcare workers experience burnout at some point in their career. Some of you in this room, in this seats, may already have experienced burnout. And I'm here to tell you that it is not your fault. For we are working through a broken medical system. That's why now it is critical, now more than ever, 
to recall upon your greater purpose during those times when you feel like you have nothing left to give. You see, when my father had passed away, it was one of the deepest, darkest moments in my life. I never felt so lonely before. And it was in those moments that I reminded myself, my purpose is greater than my pain. My purpose is greater than my sadness. My purpose is greater than me. You see, I'm doing this for my Latino community and all those kids from underserved backgrounds who have never seen a doctor who looks like them to show them anything is possible. I'm doing this for my mother, who instilled in her little boy the belief that anything is possible. I'm doing this for my wife and my in-laws and my mentors, many of whom who sit here today who saw something in me before I could see it for myself. And most importantly, I'm doing this for my son because I want him to grow up knowing that there is no quit and there is no victim in his father, just like his grandfather showed me. Whether you realize it or not, each of you in this room is a source of inspiration for somebody. That's why you must reconnect to your purpose when times get tough. Never give up, never give in. As you leave here today, know that Rush has instilled within you the knowledge, skills, and heart to become compassionate leaders in the world of healthcare. Embrace the challenges head on and be proud of the work you do. I would do anything to embrace my father again. And I know someday we'll meet again, but not yet. My job isn't finished, and neither is yours. Congratulations, class of 2023. Thank you. Okay, we got through all of them, guys. I think there's more to come. Now. Yeah, they have to do. Congratulations, their everybody.
food pantries and settings too numerous to count to assist members of our community. And for many of you, this was during the pandemic, bringing increased risk to you personally. Your dedication, your sense of inquiry, and your compassion has been an inspiration to all of us, your faculty. And to the faculty, sincere thanks for your great work. These years have been equally challenging for you. And despite that, you have never faltered in your commitment to our students and to the many other components of your important work. Faculty, please stand and be recognized. We have again failed to teach you everything. Inevitably, just as it happens to everyone, there will come a time when you're not sure what to do. At that time, never hesitate. Just call us. Wherever you are in the world, just call. We'll be here anytime, day or night. We're family now. And now will the graduates please stand again and face their family, friends, and other loved ones and thank the individuals that did so much to make them happy. officially bring the 51st commencement ceremony to a close and request that our guests remain seated until the faculty and students have exited the auditorium. Have a great day and congratulations to everybody. So is it, the, they're all different places then? Uh, not these four. So this one, this one, and Spider-Man, and the D20 are all done by the same person. I like her kind of, she's very bold with colors. Yeah. Um, I like her like, style. She does a good job. This is still like, this is a fresh one, so it's still a little bit flaky. Yeah. That looks best. several times today because you're dropping the f-bomb in that during the graduation thing graduation? I didn't yeah we as a graduation that. i did not say the f-bomb at the graduation yeah, you didn't you even apologize the to the other people remember you said oh i'm sorry negative yeah what other people there's other people there and you said oh i'm really sorry Jamie texted, can you see it? Make sure it's okay with Willow. Yeah. You're changing the subject. Story of my life. Jeez. <laughs> 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 Natalie. 
You decide to marry her, Dan. <laughs>